On today's episode, SpaceX to the rescue, China has a new vision for the moon, and Rolls-Royce will power space exploration. New reports are indicating that the ongoing epic of the Boeing Starliner may have finally pushed NASA over the edge. The newly developing story reveals NASA's efforts to use the SpaceX Crew Dragon vehicle as a lifeboat to bring astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams safely back to Earth. The immediate effects of this will be the delay of NASA's Crew-9 flight aboard the SpaceX Dragon, which was scheduled for launch on August 18th. According to reports from Ars Technica that cite anonymous sources within the space agency, the Crew-9 date has been reset for September the 24th, though this has yet to be officially confirmed. The motivation behind this delay would be to reconfigure either the crew count or the flight hardware of the Dragon capsule to accommodate Butch and Sonny on a return mission. In a previous report last week, Ars Technica wrote that SpaceX has already identified flight suits that would fit Wilmore and Williams, allowing them to fly home on one of two Dragon vehicles. Crew-8 is currently docked to the ISS with a scheduled landing date of August 27th. So in one possibility, Crew-9 could fly to the ISS with just two crew members on board and two empty seats. Or in a second possibility, the Dragon could be refitted with six seats in total. We know that on July 15th, NASA awarded a $267,000 contract to SpaceX with the designation Special Study for Emergency Response. This contract has a completion date of August the 15th. There are no specifics given for what kind of work this contract would cover. It's not a huge amount of money in this context, but it could be enough motivation for SpaceX to consider experimenting with additional seats. The trick here is that NASA only has two docking ports on the ISS. The other four are on the Russian segment, and one of those ports is indefinitely occupied by a potentially broken Starliner. We'll get to more of that in a second, but the docking port number two is occupied by the Crew-8 Dragon, so it becomes a weird game of musical chairs in space. And that's made even more complicated by one surprising problem with the Starliner. NASA couldn't dump the capsule even if they wanted to. Ars Technica reports that current flight software aboard Starliner is not capable of an autonomous undocking and re-entry which is strange, even for Boeing, because one of the few things that Starliner has been able to do right in the past was a fully automated return to Earth in 2022. But for whatever reason, that capability was removed from the current flight vehicle. Sources describe the process to update the software on Starliner as non-trivial and significant, and that it could take up to four weeks to complete. This is driving the delay in launching Crew-9. We still don't know if Starliner is safe for humans to fly, and now we find out that the computer can't do it either. Speaking of safety, in their most recent update, posted on August 2nd, Boeing writes, We remain confident in Starliner and its ability to safely return to Earth with crew, based on an abundance of testing conducted by our teams and NASA in space and on the ground. According to sources reported by ours, NASA is not as confident. One informed source said it was a greater than 50-50 chance that the crew would come back on Dragon. Another source said it was significantly more likely than not that they would. The testing that Boeing refers to has been abundant, they're not wrong about that. Teams of ground engineers at NASA's White Sands facility in New Mexico spent weeks recreating and working through the thruster issues. Williams and Wilmore have boarded the docked capsule twice to conduct in-orbit hot-fire tests of the propulsion system. The first hot-fire last month tested seven of the eight aft-facing thrusters, and another hot-fire last week methodically tested 27 of Starliner's 28 thrusters. Each test excluded the one engine that failed completely on the docking attempt. What's so frustrating here is that all of this work has not uncovered a root cause for the thruster malfunction experienced on Starliner's approach to the ISS. So we don't know why it happened, and there's no way to know whether the same problem will happen again. Starliner's reaction control system is necessary for two critical maneuvers. First, the capsule has to undock and pull safely away from the ISS. This is imperative even if the vehicle is empty to avoid collision with the station. Then, the capsule has to perform a deorbit burn to bring its trajectory down to a perigee inside Earth's atmosphere. If this isn't done perfectly, the capsule will burn up at worst or land somewhere unintended at best. 
It's probably noteworthy that Boeing released their second quarter financial statement last week. It showed that the company has lost an additional $125 million on Starliner due to this ongoing test flight, which brings the total to $1.6 billion of financial loss on the project. NASA awarded Boeing $4.2 billion in 2027 as a fixed price contract, a great decision on the agency's part, which means that all of the cost overruns are taken on by the private company and not the US taxpayer. Although the total cost of cleaning up the ongoing mess left behind in Starliner's wake remains to be seen. What would it take to transform the space between the Earth and the Moon into a bustling hub of activity? China's latest plan, based on a new paper published by the Chinese National Space Administration, aims to build an extensive cislunar space infrastructure that promises to revolutionize space exploration and international collaboration. This project is so challenging that it has to be tackled in five distinct stages, each building upon the success of the previous one. Phase 1. Laying the Foundation China's journey begins with deploying initial communication, navigation, and monitoring satellites in cislunar space. These satellites will provide essential data relay and positioning services, supporting early lunar missions. This phase focuses on testing and validating core technologies to ensure reliability. Phase 2. Expanding the Network the second phase involves increasing the number of satellites and expanding their coverage. Advanced monitoring systems will improve situational awareness, crucial for space mission operations. By enhancing interoperability with international systems, China hopes to foster global cooperation and data sharing. Phase 3. Full Deployment in this phase, a complete constellation of satellites and ground systems would be deployed, providing continuous and reliable services. This robust network will support a range of activities from scientific research to commercial endeavors and manned missions to the moon and beyond. Advanced technologies will enable high-speed data transmission and precise navigation. Phase 4. Sustaining the Infrastructure Maintaining this infrastructure for the long term is another challenge. China plans to establish a routine operation and maintenance framework to ensure the system remains reliable and up-to-date. Continuous upgrades and international collaborations will keep the system at the forefront of space capabilities. Phase 5. Advanced Development and Utilization with a fully operational cislunar infrastructure, China aims to support deep space exploration missions, including trips to Mars. The infrastructure will also facilitate the growth of the space economy by supporting activities like resource extraction, space tourism, and manufacturing in space. Despite its grand vision, this project faces many challenges. Developing high-precision orbital dynamics modeling, ensuring collaborative operation among different space segments, and establishing a unified time-space reference system are just a few of the technical hurdles. Advanced communication and navigation technologies add layers of complexity. China's cislunar space infrastructure is a strategic move to enhance national capabilities in science and technology. By leading in this area, China positions itself as a key player in a new era of space exploration. This project supports major national projects and contributes to a broader understanding of the universe. While China leads this ambitious project, it also opens doors for international cooperation. Infrastructure aims to provide shared services and participate in formulating international standards, fostering a spirit of collaboration in space development. This approach will pave the way for more harmonious space operations in the future. The future of space exploration just got a massive power boost, thanks to Rolls-Royce. Rolls-Royce has secured 4.8 million pounds from the UK Space Agency under the National Space Innovation Programme. This funding aims to propel the development of their space-based nuclear micro-reactor technology, a game-changer in the realm of space exploration and energy. Rolls-Royce is renowned for luxury cars and jet engines and has been a leader in nuclear reactor technology since 1963, primarily for the Royal Navy submarines. Leveraging six decades of expertise, Rolls-Royce is now pioneering nuclear applications beyond the Earth. At the heart of this innovation is the micro-reactor, a compact and versatile nuclear power source, designed for ease of transportation and rapid deployment. This reactor is poised to revolutionize both terrestrial and space applications. 
The micro reactor's compact size and robust power output make it ideal for continuous energy supply and efficient propulsion in space. This technology promises to enhance satellite flexibility and ensure reliable power for lunar operations, potentially transforming the landscape of space missions. Unlike radioisotope thermoelectric generators used in some space missions, the micro reactor will utilize nuclear fission, providing significantly more power. Rolls-Royce is focusing its research on three essential areas of the micro-reactor. The fuel used to generate heat, the techniques to ensure efficient heat transfer within the reactor, and the technology that converts the generated heat into reliable electrical power. The recent funding is part of a larger 9.1 million pound investment aimed at advancing the micro-reactor's technological readiness. Collaborating with academic partners from the University of Oxford and Bangor University, Rolls-Royce plans to refine the reactor's design and capabilities, with a flight demonstration anticipated by the end of the decade. The future of space exploration hinges on the ability to generate consistent power, and traditional solar power has critical limitations. The micro-reactor, independent of solar energy, offers a resilient solution for sustained lunar surface operations and beyond. Rolls-Royce aims to have a reactor ready to send to the moon by 2029, providing the power necessary for humans to live and work on the lunar surface.